Good afternoon, everybody. Um, today we're doing something a little different than we usually do. Uh, normally you see me working at my table or working on a piece of furniture, but as a lot of people know, I'm also an instructor for faux effects, and I thought I'd take a little time and introduce everybody to some of the faux effects products that you hear me talking about. Um, I know especially in my furniture group or um, on my business page painted which is where you're viewing this right now not everybody knows what every single product is that i'm working with so i thought i'd start with a, a tutorial now you can see this is not the angle of my studio you usually see but again as a faux effects instructor i also look like i'm a faux effects warehouse um set coat stucco lux varnish plus all kinds of products. Hey Emily, hey Rima, nice to see you with us. Um, so we're gonna work with basically today, uh, basic application techniques for Stucco Lux and for Luster Stone. I will explain each product as I'm using it and then demonstrate steps. I prep the boards in a little like a cooking show, like you pull it in out, you know, you put something in the oven and you pull it out and it's done. Hey Gina, nice to see you too. Um, I have boards taped up, prepped, and ready to go. Now, understand, I'm left-handed, so it might actually, well, it'll actually look like, because the way this works, it'll look like I'm right-handed to you, but this is actually my left hand because the way um, this selfie mode of camera works. Um, I have it, my board's taped up on the boards. It's a product called Set Coat. Set Coat is faux effects paint and priming product in one. This is not the same as paint and primer that you find at Home Depot. Um, it is a specially formulated product that came about when people started doing faux, uh, faux finishes on walls 20, 30 years ago. Um, originally everything was oil-based, but now everything, almost everything's water-based. So Faux Effects developed a paint that was 100% acrylic, low VOC to zero VOC, everything's VOC compliant in the faux effects line. And when it cured, when it dried, it dried to the same smoothness as an oil paint, which is a big deal because water-based paints, um, acrylics and acrylic latex, specifically latexes, um, dried so that it grabbed glazes and grabbed products and sped drying. Oil-based finishes, though, had this nice smoothness to it, and that's what Set Coat was designed to do. Um, so I've primed all my boards, and I'm on polystyrene boards. You can order them, and uh, I've put my Set Coat on there. Now I'll give you a couple little bits of information where I purchase my product. I order through www.foamarketplace.com. Um, comprehensive, complete faux effects product lines, and you can order things like polystyrene through, you cannot order their trowels, but you can order their cheesecloth and all the other products that uh, I generally mention. And if they, you can't get them there, I'll tell you where you can get them. Uh, that's distributed by Martin Allen Hirsch. It's out of Louisville, Kentucky. He is in the UPS World Hub. So when you order from there, um, like for me, if I order at two o'clock on Wednesday, I get my packages somewhere between four and six o'clock on Thursday. Um, and that's not expedited shipping, just so you understand how fast the shipping is there. Yes, that and that is the school I teach at. I teach at Decorative Finishes Studio in Loopville, Kentucky. Um, they're having a terrific chinoiserie class right now. Uh, and I wish I was there, but my work keeps me here. Uh, the other thing I'm going to remind everybody, I know a lot of us, a lot of who pop in are subscribers, but if you want to keep up with me uh, to see my lives and get notifications of them, I will be regularly posting the ability to sign up for live notifications. You'll see the posts, follow the directions. There will be a message that comes to your Facebook Messenger inbox and you respond to it and it subscribes you to the live so you always see what I'm doing. Hey Minata, hey Fernando, nice to see you both here. I appreciate your visits. All right, 
now that I've done my call to action, uh, yes, I think you have been added to this group to see live, correct? Yes, if you received um, email notifications, then you are live. You are getting the notifications that I'm going live so that you can see me here making a mess in my studio. Hello, Shannon. Hello, Heather. Nice to see you here. Um, if my back is turned and I'm working on the board and I'm not acknowledging you, give me a minute. I need a minute. I gotta get like this close to read because, you know, I'm old. I can't see well. But I did, I did put on cute earrings so that when I go close, oops, kick that. When I go close, you can see good looking earrings. So, I'm also a klutz. Everybody knows, you've probably all seen my post about me doing the wheeled knee pads and plant, putting money on how fast I take a dump on my face doing it. But anyway, let's get back to our product. So the first one we're gonna start out with is Stuco Lux. And I put everything down so I could find it. And what do you want to bet I can't find it? Give me a second, let me duck out because it's actually at my feet. Oh, I'm so prepared. Oh, thank you, Chandra. I appreciate that. All right, so here we are, Stuco Lux. Now, I know you're seeing it reverse, but take a good look at Stuco Lux. This is a very cool polished plaster. Um, it takes a little getting used to because you have to work with it faster than you work with synthetics. It is a mineral-based plaster. Uh, which means it polishes up super easily. It's, it's got some lime in it and it's got some other minerals so it allows you to, to polish up. This color is toasted cognac, which according to my camera looks really, really, really brown, uh, really yellow, but it's not. It's actually kind of brownish. And it dries super fast and you have to learn to work with the speed and you ply it really, really thin. So we're gonna do it in a couple layers and then I'm gonna address some questions about each one layer as we go along. And behind me, you can see I have my trowel, I have tapes, I have a lot of faux effects products. And we're gonna cover a few things. And I have a dipstick, of course, which is at my feet again, too. Okay, so. Uh, again, I'm left-handed, so my arm will be moving a little bit blocking the camera. I apologize. It's the way my studio is set up right now. I can't reverse it because I have a couple of big pieces of furniture in the way. And I'm also going to be talking about how you apply this on a wall starting in a corner and then moving out. So I'm going to take a little bit of product, not a ton. For those who aren't familiar with troweling, you're going to want to put it on the side of the trowel that touches the board. You're not putting it in the middle because you're not buttering it across. You're scraping it on the edge. Stuco Lux is a traditional application of Stuco Lux is three layers. You can do more, but the idea is to keep it about as thick as a dollar bill. So your first layer is your scratch coat, which means you're scraping it across and you're basically creating your, your subtexture. Um, the very cool thing about Stuco Lux, it's not the same as regular lime plasters, is it's flexible. So you don't need a special lime primer. It can go right on set coat. And I want you to see, when I am starting in a corner, I'm starting in the corner opposite the way I would trowel. Why? Because I want to trowel wet into dry. Or I'm sorry, dry into wet. Gosh, I don't even know what I'm saying. Um, it keeps you from getting um, these kind of marks where you get, you just drop your trowel in the middle of wet plaster. So I'm moving from my dry space into my wet. If you notice, I am all about the snaky, organic movements. Um, this is a plaster where everything you do on each layer eventually translates into the final finished layer. So if you do this kind of layers, or windshield wiper motions where you do this and this and this and this, all of that will show. You don't want to do that. 
you want smooth, snaky movements, and you don't want to drop your trowel in there like that, because if you leave that like that there, it will show in your final layer. It may show in my final layer of this because I've been doing it, because Stuco Lux dries really, really fast. And you can see how thin I'm putting it on. And it's already starting to dry up in this corner because as I wanted to put a little more here, it was grabbing it. It is super fast drying. You have to learn to work quicker. This is, if you've never used a quick drying high burnishing plaster like Stuco Lux before, do not do this on your client's wall without having practiced it first. So I'm gonna take this one down. Oh, the other thing I will say, when I'm working with Stuco Lux, always, always, always have a damp rag because it also, oh, why dry into wet? So that you don't have trowel marks into it. When you trowel dry into wet, you're moving the plaster and able to lift the trowel without leaving a sharp edge. Those sharp edges don't look very pretty. They're called methods of application showing and it's, it looks unattractive on the final passes. So you want to make sure everything looks organic. You don't want to see how it got applied to the wall. And I keep my trowel clean. Um, this dries so fast, it dries on the back edge of your trowel too. And if you don't keep it cleaned off, as you're troweling, you're gonna start seeing gritty, streaky bits. You have to keep your trowel clean. So I'm gonna take this down. I'm gonna stick it over on another board and we'll see how quickly this dries. Meanwhile, we'll start on our set, because I got smart, I actually prepped ahead of time. So hang on a sec, let me drop this out of the way. Okay, so I have a board that has our first layer on it. Grab some tape, yes, I have these huge rolls of tape, my husband's company. Um, does things like floor masking and adhesive and tape and drape for automotive supplies. They're a paper converting company, so I always have some kind of interesting stuff on hand. Hi, Lori, nice to see you with us. So, here we go. I got a bunch of, let's hope I don't have it fall off because I'm known to tape and then have things fall off while I'm working. So this took very little time to dry. Of course, I ran a fan on it to make sure it was dry enough for the demo. Um, I very specifically left a little bit of interesting texture. Uh, what's the difference between this product and Luster Stone? This is a high polishing Venetian plaster product. Luster Stone is a shimmering metallic plaster. The basic applications are very similar, but the products are absolutely not. So I've left a little texture here. Um, let me see if I can get this close enough for you to see. Pardon me with the swinging things around. Ah, it's not gonna show easily because I'm getting shadow. If you look right here, I left something called fish eyeing on purpose. Sorry, I hope I didn't make anybody seasick with that. Um, because this fish eyeing texture will show through in the end. Uh, will it show a seam if you work back into the area that's already dried? Uh, yeah. If you make it really, really clear, you have a very clear, sharp delineation. That's why when you're doing this and you're doing it as one person, you kind of do organic shapes so that that final, uh, if you've got a dry edge, you can work back into it and it doesn't look that way. I've, been, I've done miles of this stuff and you can't tell where I began and where I started. I've done miles of it by myself because I would create shapes on a wall that were sort of like this, you know, random shapes and that helps. Because, and it's a little like lap lines with glaze. If you don't work it carefully, uh, would it be better to work in teams uh, because of drying time? Eh, not really, you don't have to. Um, once you get used to it, it works really fast and it's very easy. Again, like I said, I've applied miles of this by myself, you can't see a lap line. It just takes a little practice. Um, my easels, 
uh, are hollow core doors and I have troweled entire doors. They were in like 20 bucks a piece at Home Depot. I primed them with Zinsser white shellac. I put a little set coat on them and I practice. It's not an expensive thing, but once you get the hand of it, it's really easy. Um, I'm sorry, I'm reading because I'm blind. Okay, I see I read everything. Um, I've never, ever, ever had a lap line show because you do it. What's the difference between Stucco Lux and Venetian Gem? Uh, Stucco Lux is mineral plaster. Venetian Gem is 100% acrylic. Therefore, you, can't, you don't get the easy high shine on it the same as you do with um, Stucco Lux. Venetian Gem doesn't polish the same way, but Venetian Gem can be used in places that you can't use Stucco Lux because Stucco Lux cannot be sealed with an acrylic product. It is organic, it needs to breathe, it needs to be waxed or use Stucco Lux sealer, which actually has um, some wax in it, but you can't top coat it with uh, any acrylic plasters, you can't roll an acrylic top coat on it, you can't roll a synthetic top coat on it, it needs to breathe. Therefore, it's not the best option in some place like a kitchen. Uh, I know people have used it in a bathroom. I wouldn't use it in a high use ba bathroom, I would use it like in a powder room. So here we go, second layer. Second layer is the movement layer. So again, I'm doing all kinds of snaky movements. Uh, I didn't follow my own advice because it's a sample board. I didn't start over here and move wet into dry. So I'll do that so you all can, or sorry, dry into wet. Gosh, I can't get that right to dry into wet, not wet into dry, dry into wet. So if I was starting over here as, as a lefty, I start in the right corner, pull my plaster out, and then I snake into it. Well, I need a little more. Now, it'll, the second layer will take more product, but it will also dry faster because the moisture is not only evaporating this way, it's sucking into the already dried plaster. So, I'm coming in. Oh, I got a big chunk of goo in there. That happens. If you have really bad walls, this is not a product to use on it because it will show every single flaw. So if you have a bad patch mark somewhere, like somebody did, filled in nail holes. Oh, Sue, this set coat was black. Okay, and I can already see, it's already starting to dry. And how do I know it's dry? It turns from shiny to sort of like a wet clay look. Um, I might, if I wanted that texture, I might skip a little, but this is where you can see right here. Let me see if I can get the camera close enough. Right here, where I pulled when it was wet, but starting to dry, it was getting a little clay-like, I can shred it back. So you don't, you don't want to overwork the product. You don't have, unlike other products, you don't have a ton of playtime. Now I'm burying that a little bit. It will kind of telegraph, but it'll look intentional. So I fixed that spot and you can see I've put 100% coverage, although I missed a corner up here. And this is already starting to dry. You can see how different it is. This is where it's really wet. This is where the moisture is starting to soak in to the um, plaster behind it and also starting to evaporate. And the shine is different. This is sort of like wet clay here. This is wet, wet, wet. And again, I got to clean off my trowel. Now, if you look at my trowel, you don't see product all over here. It's not smeared across it. I'm, a t I'm touching my surface at about a 30 degree angle and keeping my edge clean. If you have product and you're using your trowel flat on the surface, you're gonna get big smears and weird trails and it's gonna look like um, a cake decorating fail. And uh, I know because I've done it. I don't pick on anybody for what they've done because I guarantee you if you can do it and have problems, I've already done it and done it badly. Now, the other fun thing we could do if you wanted to, I've got this trowel nice and smooth. Um, and I may ruin this board doing this, but I could also take, hang on. 
I would put the plaster on just a little thicker, and I may do that in just a second. Yeah, I think I'll put a little more plaster on. And you can roll an imprint roller through it, and then when you do the backfill, that pattern is in there. So let me, yeah, let me put, all right. You know you've been gold leafing and silver leafing. The edge of the tip of my trowel has leaf flakes all over it. Oh my God. They like show up out of nowhere when you've been doing a lot of this. All right, I'm gonna put a little more on here. Uh, I'm being really careful not to scrape into my surface because I've already got plaster drying on here and I don't wanna shred it up. This is not standard, I'm just showing you an option. See, and I get a little chunk sometimes that shows up in things, I have to pull it out. I got a couple chunks in here and they just wanna move in. I wanna be part of the finish desperately. I'm, I'm sorry, I don't have the camera angled. Let me angle it back here. All right. Now, I'm gonna take my roller and roll it on through. Now, when this dries, I'm gonna backfill it tight and you're gonna see this buried into the print. It's very cool. Can't see, yeah, I moved my camera, I'm sorry. I'm, my brain, this is what happens. When I teach, I'm so busy thinking about the, the finish that I forget where my body is, so um, I keep trying to turn around and read what you're saying to, uh, to answer your questions. All right, this is gonna get thrown on the floor. It'll probably have silver leaf on it when I pick it up. This gets put away. I'm gonna set this on the floor. This is my standard thing, setting it on the floor. And here we go. This is not imprinted. It's just a standard smooth trowel, two layer finish with the, how much pressure did, I didn't push into it. I just let the weight of the roller stamp into it. Uh, I know somebody else had a question. How long have I been doing finishes? I'm super knowledgeable. Well, <laughs> I've been in the decorative finishing industry professionally for, um, this is my 28th year. I've been around for a while. Um, and I've been a faux effects instructor uh, for eight or nine years now. And so I've trained in a lot of their products. And when a new product comes out, um, I take it home, I test it, I see how it works before I share it with anybody. All right, so here we go. We're back on this. I put my stuff on my shelf. I can't find it. I am cleaning the edge of my trowels again. No dirty trowels, especially with this product because it will dry up quick and you'll have a nasty finish. Now, the final layer is also the polishing layer. I'm putting just a little bit on here. This does not take a lot of product. Okay? And I'm scraping it across. And in the process of scraping, it also burnishes. And this is gonna start setting up pretty quickly because all the moisture is soaking in back through the Stucco Lux as well as um, evaporating off the top. You can see it's already starting to turn darker and a little clay-like almost immediately because it's already soaking in. And then what I'm also doing, cleaning my trowel, cleaning my trowel a lot. Uh, 
how can you clean a trowel uh, that has product dried? Um, you, first of all, <laughs> wet rag. Because water-based products don't cure for 30 to 45 days. So if you've got stuff on here that's dry, otherwise you take something like Easy Clean or um, uh, what the heck is the product? All of a sudden my mind is going blank. Easy Clean, um, crud cutter, denatured alcohol, all of that. All right, so it's starting to dry and this is the stage where it's called in love. It's an Italian phrase. Don't ask me to speak Italian. I can barely speak English some days. And I'm going to run my trowel lightly, lightly over the surface. You're basically burnishing. And I'm always constantly wiping the edge because you can pick up a little product. But as I'm doing this, ooh, I got to see, I got to scrape right in there because I had a little bit of crud on my trowel. Is something on my trail that wants to scrape. What the heck is on my trail? I am not putting any pressure on here. I got something. I gotta keep cleaning it. Because I keep seeing a scrape show up and it means that there's something on my trail. I probably have a nick in my blade somewhere, which happens because you know they get they get beat on which means when I need to I will take a piece of sandpaper and hone the edge of my trowel and I will go to uh, you know 800 even a thousand grit to make sure that I don't have any rough edges but as I'm doing this it's starting to get shiny oh, I am not happy because I am getting big, big scrapes in here, and it's my trowel, it's not the product, it's the fact that I've got a trowel that's got a nick in it. <sighs> Time to hone my trowels. But as I go, and this, this movement doesn't matter, don't scrape it like this, and don't go flat, because if you go against the blade, you'll end up chattering into your plaster and digging holes. Uh, why an angle trowel? This trowel, um, I'll tell you why I use this trowel. This trowel is lighter weight. It's very flexible. I have pavons. I prefer them for heavier texture, but there is no reason you couldn't use a rectangular beveled edge pavon on it, which is a traditional trowel. These are called um, Japanese trowels because they're made in Japan or penguin trowels because of the penguiny shape. I just happen to light up like them. They're very light for a soft plaster like Stuco Lux. And I'm going along and I will bring the camera and flex this. And you're gonna have to forgive the scrapes because it's my trowel. Because it's leaving some scrape marks. If when you're doing this, you feel your trowel drag across this, the area, it's not dry enough yet. When, you're tr when it looks still wet and it's dark and your trowel glides over the surface, it's dry enough for you to be burnishing. Now, Stucco Lux is interesting too because when it's dry, you can actually go back and polish it with a terry towel or, um, you know, if you want to go that crazy, you can use a car buffer. It doesn't take that much, but I know a lot of people use car buffers. Um, I waited a long time because I'm talking while I'm doing this, and I put uh, not enough time into my burnishing as I was talking. So some of this is dried and it's not polishing uh, quite as shiny. But then this spot right in here, where I'm doing it while it's still wet, it's burnishing up beautifully. And I keep cleaning the edge of my trowel because the more I clean it, the less problems I'm going to have. And I'm looking at it to the side because I can see the reflection. And as soon as I'm done, I will pull this off and flash the reflection to you all.
but some of those fish eyes that I put in here in the first layer are gonna show in the last. So every movement shows in every layer. And this is really pretty. I love this cognac color too. It will dry lighter, like in here. It will not stay this dark. This is the moisture that's in the, pr uh, the plaster. And par you're burnishing it and you're also compressing it a little. I don't push hard. I can push hard on it. Once it's the right dry, I can muscle it, but I'll have to. You know, I, I muscle a little bit when I do like I did today and I'm talking to you and I'm not paying attention to how quickly it's drying. Checking my sheen. And I'm, I'm shining it hard because I was talking. So, you know, me and my big mouth. So let me pull this down. And see if I can get the shine to show for you. There we go. You get a really super high shine. I can actually see, well, I can see the shadow of my hand, but usually I can see the reflection of my hand in here. And when this dries, it's gorgeous. So when would I add wax? When it's completely dry. That's when you wax this. This must be waxed. It cannot have an acrylic top coat on it. It cannot have an acrylic wax. It has to have real wax. It has to be able to breathe. So don't, you. if you put something other than wax on here that doesn't allow this to breathe, breathe, it will just simply delaminate. It will just peel right off of this um, and probably take chunks of the finish with it so it's not pretty. Now, if you wanted to do something a little extra on here, let's see, where's my extra? I have all kinds of stuff. Um, there are Stuka Lux Metallics. I think this one's rich gold. I can't read it backwards. And it's it's a different consistency than um, re than regular Stuco Lux. It's far more liquid. I have so much stuff. You're gonna get a brand new one. You can see it's more liquid. Okay, I'm gonna move this out of the way. I'm gonna put the Stuco Lux metallic here. Stucco Lux Metallic doesn't really build up on the surface to get this, but you can use it on all kinds of stuff. Hi, Wendy, nice to see you. Um, okay, dipping on the floor. Uh, what about easy touch-ups? No, this is not as easy because this will show repairs. If you've got to repair this, you kind of have to start all over. And it, but this is traditional Venetian plaster kind of finish. It's, it's not going to be the same as uh, an acrylic. This is for a client who's going to put stuff in a low impact place. Okay, I've put a little bit of this Stuco Luck Metallic Rich Gold on my trowel and you can see how liquid it is. And I'm going to trowel it on. Now I can trowel it on super tight, organic movements and it's gonna take a bit more work, but you can see how it's picking up the metallic, but it's also picking up the texture. And I'm gonna do something I normally don't do, which is smear a bunch on, but I need it to move. Damn it, chunks and stuff. I hate chunks. You see, I can butter it on and get it more opaque down here or I can smooth it, uh, you know, scrape it tight up here and it just picks up the shine and the texture. And yes, I can use this right on the metallic. I can also use right on um, set coat, but it's really thin. So I usually try to put a, a little bit of plaster underneath it so we get movement already established and it's a friendlier surface. All right. As we all know, boards all look like crap with the tape on them. So when this is dry, I'm going to pull the tape 
and show you. Uh, I personally rarely use the metallics, but I just wanted to show it to you so you understand it's there. Um, you can burnish it a little bit. Where did I put my rag? The metallics are not my generally not my favorite thing because I think they're a little heavy-handed. When I use this, I usually put mica powder in my waxes and then apply the wax. I can either trowel on wax or I can just rub it on and buff it back. But sometimes a wax, sometimes the metallic is really nice. It does change the sheen. You don't have that super high, super shiny sheen with this. You just, you pick up the metallic with the plaster. Normally I would have let this dry completely because if you put it on wet on wet, you can actually rip the plaster back. So I'm gonna set this, give me a second, I'm gonna go put this on another easel with a fan on it so when I'm done with both of these, I can pull tape um, and answer questions for you. Just a second, I'm walking around the fan, trying not to break my neck doing what I normally do, which is hook my feet on the fan. Ugh, that's not what I needed. Standard move in my studio, something slides to the floor. Aren't you excited staring at a blank board over there? All right, let me turn the fan a little higher, see if I can get it dry enough so that we can do it. Up. And I'm back. Did you miss me? <laughs> I don't know. Maybe you did, maybe you didn't. All right, so I'm back here we're going to do luster stone. And again, I've primed my board. Uh, this color is metallic navy set coat, which is, see if I can get, it, can get a color read off of this in the camera, but you can see there's a little shimmer to it, which is a nice thing. You don't have to have metallic. Um, I just happen to have these boards prepped. And uh, I keep a stack of like 30 boards primed in some basic colors and then a few in the colors I just love, love, love because that's what I do. I don't like to, if I've got an idea for a sample, I do not uh, like to prime a board and then wait had hours for it to dry so it's good and dry on the polystyrene so that when I put something over it, I won't rip it back off. Um, I keep a stack primed with black, neutral white, gray, and right now my, my new favorite, you know, unusual color is the metallic navy because it's so pretty. All right, so I've got that up there. Again, luster stone, traditional application, three layers, scratch coat, movement coat, and uh, backfill coat, just like we did with the Stuco Lux, only scratch coat's a little different and definitely uh, a little faster. Um, I'm ducking again because I'm getting product. So, let's see, where do I put things? <laughs> you never know where I put things. The color we're using, I've already got some in a roller pan. Um, my favorite thing to do is if I've used something is put a little press and seal over it from the priming yesterday. So I have some still in here. Uh, four inch whiz roller. Uh, even on big walls, I don't use bigger than a four inch whiz roller because when you're rolling out a plaster, bigger rollers get really, really heavy. And I can cover this really fast. I mean, I've done enormous walls with a four inch whiz roller. If I need to move faster, I get two. Uh, I keep my whiz roller, even when it's first being used. By the way, whiz is the brand name. Four inch hot dog rollers, weenie rollers, whatever you wanna call them. The roller, when you first put it in the plaster, needs to be damp because if it's not the plaster rolls right back off of it so we've got cobalt luster stone i have a whiz roller and i'm random rolling over the entire surface i'm not rolling like this that will look like crap in the end because you'll just have a lot of directional movement and you'll see the streaks if i roll randomly like this then you can't tell how I put it on 
and in the end, the final look, it will look better. It is 100% coverage. Yeah, the little bit of copper in there is from my getting a little copper Stuco Lux stuff in there, but it won't hurt this board, especially since this is the base and I'm just demoing it. So I've got 100% coverage. Hey, Martin. I hope you're having a great class because I know your chinoiserie class. I've been wa watching the pictures. The chinoiserie class looks amazing. Um, so I rolled this on 100% coverage with a random roll uh, with a random roll on a four inch uh, whiz roller. And what I'm doing, as I throw things on the floor, what I'm doing is creating a texture to grab the luster stone. Um, I know some people do this in two layers. Here's why I don't like to do that. This has translucency. So if you scrape on one layer and then scrape on another layer, you're gonna have some weird highlight, almost bald looking spots because you've scraped too close to the paint. So it kind of flashes. Whereas if you roll this on, you have a nice tooth all over the surface and you get a much nicer application. Now, luster stone, as you saw Stuco Lux, you had to work with that. Luster stone, not so much. Luster stone has plenty of time. You can even add our product called So Slow to retard the drying and give you more open time. You cannot do that with Stuco Lux. If you do it to Stuco Lux, you ruin the integrity. Luster stone, 100% acrylic, you know, VOC compliant, and absolutely much more open time than Stuco Lux. So I have now got my board. And you can see I've had that little bit of texture there. Let's find the tape. Where did I throw the tape now? Because I'm a genius and throw things where I can't have to go duck out of camera to get them. All right. I'm so smart sometimes. God, I'm impressive. You'd think I'd never done this before. I'm waiting for the day that I have an assistant that just hands me things so that I can look like, you know, the next Food Network star. And, you know, you put things out, everything's right there. I just go like this, and somebody hands it to me. That's my, my fantasy life anyway. I want that with a lot of things. <laughs> oh, I talk to myself a lot too when I paint, so, you know, usually it's not very nice language. Hi, Celia. Oh, Rima, you'll be my assistant. Thank you. You'll be fun assistant. You always make me laugh when I'm working on stuff. All right. So I put a little tape here. I'm kind of trying to hide the uh, metallic Stuco Lux that I kind of got in there by mistake. And let's see. You want to bet my luster stone? Oh, no, I'm going to change my luster stone colors up a little bit um, because it'll make it easier for you to see. So this color is... Um, cobalt blue. Let's see. I have azure blue luster stone. I have what other colors? I want to kind of stay in the family. Ooh, I have deep periwinkle. Blue and purple could be really cool looking. Maybe I'll put a little bit of both in. No reason you can't double trowel color. But we'll, we'll do a single color first. Waiting for me to get my hair in it as usual. Watch me, you miss me leaning against the wall to do the Stuco Lux, so I'm sure there's some Stuco Lux right here. I get everything in, my, in class, I get it on my hands and I go like this, and I have a big streak of something in my hair. If I'm lucky, it's an interesting color at least. Okay, so I've got my product, I've got my trowel. Once again, I have a separate clean rag for this one. And, Hang on just a sec. Needed to get my product dipstick. So I've got this really pretty peri periwinkle purple color. And um, the reason I'm changing colors is it'll make it a little easier for you to see because uh, unlike Stuco Lux, Luster Stone doesn't change color that much when it dries. A uh, little bit, but not a whole lot. Like almost so you can't see what I'm doing. So as I explained before, as a left-handed person, I'm going to come into my right corner to start my product. 
and then I'm gonna trowel, let me see if I get it right this time, dry into wet. Why? Because then I don't see methods of application, which means I'm not doing this, where you see big lines. Well, you can't see that with the camera, so let me try it there. Where you don't see these sharp lines from my trowel, you don't want to see that, you want to have how you applied it not show in your final finish. This is a movement layer. And see how nicely it's grabbing onto that rolled on luster stone under here. I've got a nice texture, but it's also super flexible. And as I go, I could scrape it back tighter and you could see more of it, but I don't want to. I want to do a little bit of this, a little bit of that. So I've got, I'm gonna put 100% coverage. And this will stay open much longer than the Stuka Lux. I have work time. I can go back in. It's much e more easily correctable. Uh, is, that, is that a right way to say that? Much more easily correctable? It's much, much easier to correct. Hey, Eric, nice to see you. Oh, if you're in, I don't like you, you're in Florida. It's 50 degrees and chilly rainy here today. That's why I'm able to have so much extra working time too because the humidity likes to keep things open longer so I've got this on and you can see beautiful movement now again I explain do not do this this looks like windshield wiper marks it's a little hard to uh, you guys are monsoon state right now. Oh, you're funny. All right. Um, for all of those who catch these videos on my uh, YouTube channel after I finish with them, I'm doing these live. So when you see me saying random things, um, it's because I'm answering comments that show up. Can I spla slap it? Well, yeah, I could slap it. Now I got it on my hands. <laughs> All right, that was smart ass. Can I, can I suck and pull it back? No, I get texture. It doesn't peel off. It's not a peel off product. All right, it's starting to get a little dry because it's absorbing in here. So I'm gonna just put a little more on because we're gonna cover a couple other options. So I had, that's not the color I wanted. I have this in periwinkle. Let's see, and then I have the uh, Azul, which is stunningly bright. Look how pretty that is. Oh my God, it's like um, somewhere between teal and, and Tiffany blue. So if I wanted to put a little bit of that in here, I'm gonna dip into it, I'm off camera, I know. Uh, I'm gonna put a little bit, I'm not even bothering to clean my trowel yet, and I'm gonna, and then, I'm gonna smooth it in. This on its own is a beautiful finish. Yes, I get that this is bright. You can do it in all kinds of colors. You don't have to do it this bright, but this is great for you all to see. The other thing I could do is Take one of my rollers. Hey, that's cool. Thank you, Martin. Anybody who mentions this live while uh, you're ordering tomorrow will get free shipping. Yay, that's a treat. I hadn't planned on that. Thank you, Martin. That's a nice prize. Take advantage of that, everybody. This stuff weighs stuff, has some weight to it, so free shipping is a nice deal. I can also take my rollers. And I can do this. And as you can see, I'm not going in any specific direction. I can create a beautiful pa pattern in here. I hope, it, sorry if my camera's creating shadows, I'm trying to get it so you can see it. Look at how pretty that pattern is in there. Now, again, this is a finish on its own. However, 
I can let it dry and I can sand it lightly to get rid of any high spots and I can backfill it with my original color and I'll have another completely different look. I'm actually gonna go stick this uh, over to dry and then we'll come back with the final layer of a general finish for luster stone. General three finish, one color luster stone. I'm trying to give you lots of fun options while we're doing this. Luster stone, probably faux effects, number one seller. Metallic, shimmer, super easy to use, super creamy, lightweight, and, and plenty of open time. So I'm gonna set this to the side. I will, and here is, I will post pictures uh, on my Facebook painted page and share them on Faux Marketplace and on Murals Plus of the different ones once they're dry and completed because I can't um, get all of this dry in time unless I stand here and talk to you for like 30 minutes to an hour waiting for this stuff to dry because again, it's humid here. Luster Stone has uh, plenty of open time and uh, even the Stucco Lux, I've got a fan going on, even the Stucco Lux is drying slow. Um, oh, thank you, Mary. Yeah, it's just fun. Remember, you can use, especially Stucco Lux, uh, no, it's, I'm sorry, especially Luster Stone, it's, it can be used on furniture. It's durable. You can top coat this with Varnish Plus. You can use Palette Deco, which is a decorative, uh, it's not a plaster, it's a, I want to think of the right way to describe it. It is thick. It's similar in texture for those who are in art to um, shoot. People are sending me weird wet messages and it's distracting me. I apologize. It's similar to um, gel mediums, only they've got great colors. The and. I'll do that in another video. Maybe we'll do, um, if everybody wants, I'll do palette deco on Thursday and then I can show you live the finished ones of these and then we can talk about palette deco and embossing stencils and stuff with that and using them as their own finished product. Okay, so let's go back to the last layer here. Here we go. So you can see this. Awesome, when ordering in the next 24 hours, that is 24 hours from now, you will receive free shipping with the code word Mori Live at the Faux Marketplace. Take advantage of it, the free shipping is worth it. So if you have some order coming in, place your order. All right, last layer. Where did I put my product? This is me every day, folks, every day. Okay, let me move the other products out of the way. Um, and I am exactly like this in class too. Ask Martin, I am always losing the stuff I'm supposed to be using. Always. I'm kind of, like if it, even with glasses on, I can't see what I'm looking for. All right, hang on. I'm gonna use what's left in my roller pan. It's a good thing I don't care about my floor. I have very inexpensive indoor-outdoor carpeting on my floor in my studio to protect the actual floor. So when I do stuff like this, like throwing product <laughs> filled tools on the floor, it doesn't hurt anything. Okay, so again, I have, I'm back with the cobalt blue and coming in from the opposite corner again because we're going from the dry space into the wet and then tight scrape. I am not building thickness up. I'm creating a little bit of movement and I'm not doing all the same movement. I am doing a snaky organic movement because why? That's what looks best on your walls. Unless you are doing a very deliberately linear pattern. 
because your movements are part of what the finish is. Oh my gosh, this is so pretty. I know, I've got the shadow on here. Let's see if I can move the camera so you can see it a little better. Look at how pretty that is. This is a very rich, very expensive looking finish. Um, unfortunately, I can't get a good clear. Metallics are hard. It's hard to get a good light that shows the metallic so you can see it. But it's beautiful. And just because this is wet, it's also super, super flexible, which is really nice. It means that if you're not, you're not going to have problems with any swelling in your wall or anything like that and possible flaking off, which is something that's an issue with some lime plasters. You find things like to flake. Uh, Jennifer, so palette deco does not hide the sheen with luster of luster stone. Yeah, it does. Um, it's not what I would use. I, luster stone doesn't need a top coat. Um, most of the time, if you have a place like a bathroom sink where you're using this, and this is great in a bathroom, you get this great metallic shimmer and it's super, super safe with water and everything. But if you're at all concerned about it staining with something like hair dye or toothpaste or nail polish or, well, nail polish is another story whatsoever anyway, but um, you can take some thin downed aqua cream, which is one of Faux Effects glazes. It uh, dries super hard, you thin it down, and you take um, uh, a brush and you rouge it in. We have a brush we call a Neon Leon. Martin carries those, actually he is the manufacturer of them. Um, unfortunately, I don't have it right here in front of me, and by the time I dig it out, you're gonna be staring at it all, like my supplies for forever, um, because it's in a different place in my studio right now. But you just thin it down and scrub it in and it doesn't change the sheen of the luster stone and it makes it impervious to those stains. Um, it's also great in the kitchen if you were using this on a backsplash, does the same thing. Now you can put things like uh, varnish plus. You can put any water-based polyurethane over this and it's fine, but it does change the shimmer a little bit. Palette Deco I use as a thicker product. I don't use it to top coat things. I use it as a product in itself. I either use it through stencils or I add glass beads to it, as you're at, saying there. Or I use it in thin scrapes on something to create a look on its own. There, it, it's, it's a completely different animal. It's not a top coat for luster stone. Um, Gina, the best ones, I'm not sure best one what, but thank you. Uh, hopefully, whatever I did was the best, especially as I, you know, Standard me. It's not in my hair, but I just dropped the trowel on my arm. Yay. Um, the other thing I thought I'd take a minute and share is that luster stone is great for stenciling. Um, I have a couple extra boards sitting here. Nothing on them except stucco. Uh, I'm sorry, set coat. Uh, I think this, this is set coat charcoal. And I'm going to tape it up. This, one of the things I love about um, Luster Stone is it holds its shape. Uh, it doesn't sag. It doesn't um, sink into itself. So if I use it to stencil, it holds the shape and I can run tools through it and get all kinds of great finishes that way. And I'm making um, a total nightmare of taping right now, but as long as it sticks, I don't care. So I've got this with the set coat, and I have, let's see, what have I got? I have stencil, I have, this one is a deer head, so I like that one. It's bigger, it'll show better. And I have a little 3M Super 77. I'm gonna do something, thank goodness I've got a plastic wall over here that I can spray this against because normally I don't do this in my studio, I do it out a door. To get stencils to work, 
you always have an issue of the possibility of the stencil lifting, especially when you're trialing product on. So if you just put the stencil up here and tape it, you, you can have it lift up and move and that's where the bleeding comes from. So you take a little bit of this, shake it, light spray. I don't want to see, I don't want to see you all going like, no, it's this light spray you can see I just missed it on and then to keep it from leaving residue on the wall you let it dry for a minute or two so I'm just gonna stand here and wave it because you just want a light tack on it how long have I been on art uh, about an hour and if you signed up for my notifications hey Arlene um, if you sign up for my notifications, uh, I put posts out once or twice a week to sign up for notifications. It's emailed to you in your Facebook Messenger. Uh, I'm checking this because I can still feel it's gooey. Arlene, it, what, Arlene and I got tattoos together. That's how, well, how long we've known each other. We were in a convention in San Francisco and she and Elena and I, and I'm trying to remember who else was with us. There were four of us. And actually, I was in a wheelchair because I had broken my leg and broken it badly enough I couldn't put any weight on it. And I had just done it the week before and I couldn't manage anything on crutches. I had like no upper arm strength to handle crutches, but we all went and got a tattoo together in San Francisco. Okay, so I'm now tacking my stencil to the surface. That's what that does. It tacks it to the surface. It does not glue it to the surface. And I'm going to take whatever I reach first. Oh. So I've got my bucket and I've got my stick. I'm going to get my other stuff out of the way. Let me just throw this. Yes, I throw things because I start throwing things when I've been talking for a while too. So I put, I put way more than I need on here. So all I'm gonna do is I'm going, if I have a lot of sharp pointy spots like I do here, let me change the angle slightly, I'm going to go down against them. Oh, I can see a piece of my hair stuck under there. Because if I do this, the chance of catching this tip with my trowel can be a problem. Now, this is a small stencil. Normally I'd be using a much smaller trowel, but this is what I happen to have standing next to me. So I'm going in, I'm going carefully. I can build this up so thick that I can bury the stencil. You don't want to do that. And the reason is not because the, the luster stone won't keep the shape, but when you pull the stencil off, it'll have this kind of sucked up edge around it. So I'm trying to keep it level with the stencil. And see, I got a little bit right down there that I didn't mean to. smooth it in, make sure I've got all my edges covered. I've got the places filled that I want to see filled. I'm not scraping back super tight. Just scraping that off. Boy, will I have to clean the edge of that bucket because I just put like three colors in one bucket. Not what I meant to do. Oh well. And then I'm pulling my stencil. Don't pull your stencils from the bottom because if you lose it, it'll fall back onto the sur. You know, if you lose your grip on it, it'll fall back onto the surface and then it'll make a mess. You pull it from the top, and it took that stencil so nicely. And I've got some thickness to it. I don't think I can make it show on camera, but I've got the thickness of like a eh, couple dollar bills on there. Uh, I'd say millimeters, but that makes everybody crazy. If I tell them like one or two dollar bill thicknesses, this might be the thickness of maybe two or three. And we're covered here. Maury and her blue moose. Great. Well, at least I don't have the green moose sheets up in the background, Martin, so you should be happy about that. Uh, that would scare me in Florida. Painters don't dust walls here. Um, 
actually, this is, there's not enough adhesion on here for it to pull your paint. I, it, the, the adhesion level is like the same, whoops, I'm whacking my easel. The adhesion level when you do something like that, I put that on really fresh and I should be able to move that stencil around four more times the minimum before I put um, another coat of, and I mean light coat of um, uh, spray adhesive on it. So there shouldn't be a problem with that. The, the tack level of this art is the same as delicate blue. If you're, if that sounded like it was pulling off too much, I probably just didn't let it dry long enough because I'm talking right now. When I do this on a job, I spray them. I can walk away for 10 minutes because I'm still doing other prep. And all I'm getting is a very super light tack so that the stencil doesn't move and it doesn't bleed. I could still make it bleed if I worked hard enough on it. I could shove stuff so hard across my stencil that it would squish under. But the, the point of putting the adhesive isn't to keep it from bleeding, it's to keep it from moving, which then creates lifting issues and the bleed goes under that way. All right, I think, gosh, I think I've covered everything. I'll put, bring back the gold board so that, uh, I think it's dry enough for me to show it to you, the gold Stuco Lux board. Hang on just a second. And actually, if I keep going on this and talking for a few minutes more, that one where I did the tiger print in it is almost dry enough to backfill that too. So I'm pulling tape off the gold board so you can see how pretty it was because tape makes everything look bad. Um, the tape, you all saw white tape on my board. The only reason I'm using it is because I had it. It's white artist tape and I ran out of one inch blue painters tape which is what I prefer to frame my boards with because it makes a nice one inch frame. It's a little better than two inch frames, which then look um, like I was afraid to do anything else. Oh, the adhesive 77, that's what I use all the time, Art. I don't buy any of this low tack stuff. I don't buy the, the you know, the gentle repositionable. Um, spray because the tack on the 77 lasts longer and like I said if you let it sit and dry for a little while the adhesive on it's really good and it's low tack it scares everybody but I gotta tell you I've done it on brand new construction walls that they didn't do a great job my taint my tape pulled the paint but the stencil certainly did not okay so here is that Stuco Lux board with the gold metallic Stuco Lux on top of it. And as I was saying, the thing that's different with Stuco Lux than it is with other mineral plasters, flexible. You can't do this with lime plasters. It would flake. That's why when they do lime samples, it's on masonite board and you have to have a special crystallized primer. You don't need that for this product. I love this. This is like the coolest thing. I do a lot of stuco lux it's it, i've done more stuco lux jobs polished plaster than probably anything else i no, i don't bother doing venetian gem because this polishes up faster for me i use venetian gem in a lot of ways but this is my go-to polished plaster um i'm gonna pull that other stuco lux board over because i think we're close enough that i could at least backfill a little bit of it and let you see what's what happens when we have that texture on there so give me a second Ooh, and i'm back faux effects is an amazing product line so now you can see, you can see where I'm still pretty wet up here. And yes, your Stuco Lux samples are still in great shape after all these years. So are mine. I have um, more than 200 sample boards hanging out in my storage closet for my studio. Um, and I gotta tell you, I pile everything on top of them. The only ones that don't hold up are the classroom boards, but that's because we throw, literally,
literally have thrown them around the room um, and they get passed around and people, you know, pick them up and throw them on top, other stuff on top of them. And I've had, I've thrown trowels on them and they're, they're nothing, there's nothing wrong with them. We just beat on them. So they're not quite as pretty and shiny. So you can see we have this here with the texture. It's taking a little longer because remember I put on two layers um, really challenging myself, but I'm gonna backfill a little right here because I really don't care if I destroy this board again. It's a sample and I'm demonstrating. So I guess I better clean this off. Oh my God, am I gonna have to clean my studio when I'm done? You have no idea how bad this is around here. I had it absolutely cleaned up for uh, doing this and then doing a demo and trying to stay close to the camera. Everything's on my feet. So I'm back to my Stuco Lux and Cognac. I'm gonna move, sorry for sticking my head in there, but I gotta turn around and see actually where I set things so they don't fall on the floor. And let me see, where did I put my dipstick? Here it is. I have dipstick with gold on it, so I better wipe it off so I can put the Cognac back on it. Um, you can mix the metallics into this, but it doesn't really help. It kind of buries them. Did Lester Stone make it into my hair? I missed it. <laughs> Lester Stone made it on my arms, but I don't see it in my hair. Not yet. Well, I could be wrong. I'll notice when I go upstairs. It's harder to see it in a camera than it is in a mirror. Um... Am I only using my iPhone? Yes, I'm only using my iPhone. Um, it's because it fits into my tripod. I don't bother with um, using my iPad. I did it once and I couldn't get a good angle on it. iPhone makes this the easiest for me. And actually the picture and the video and the sound has always been really clear on it. So, I've got the Cognac Stuco Lux. I'm not going to follow my past directions of dry and you know, getting this side and everything, because I still have wet spots. So right now I'm just hoping for the best. Oh, it's on the hair. You're right. Oh my gosh, I feel it on the back of my hair. Gosh, I'm a genius. Martin's happy now because he's got me with Stuco Lux or uh, Luster Stone in my hair. Like that never happened before. Oh, every class. So I'm back filling tightly. Doing nice tight backfill, and you can already see it starting to pop up that tiger pattern. And I'll go back here like this. nice backfill on this going. Now, if it was too textured, um, I could leave it as it is right now and backfill it again. You're still wondering. Uh, you're basically out of the business due to some changes. Uh, let's see, I'm sorry, I'm trying to read your question. Any idea to do what to do with leftover product? Um, you can donate it to places like Habitat for Humanity and uh, art schools and things like that. You can get a tax write-off on it. If the product's new, there's um, there's an artist rummage sale site or two here on Facebook. You can just pull out a call and see if you tell everybody what you got. Uh, the only thing I had in mind is using it on canvas. And yes, you can use it on canvas. Uh, Stuco Lux is not the greatest idea for canvas because, ooh, I just got goo in there because I got um, luster stone on the edge of my trowel from over here. Okay, so I'm going to let this dry for a second. Um, all Fofex products, with the exception, I believe, personally, of Stuco Lux, because Stuco Lux does not want to be buried by other art products, are great for canvas. Um, 
I know lots and lots and lots of people who use this on canvases and okay I'll ignore you the reason I'm looking down is I have tape stuck to the bottom of my flip-flops and I'm actually sticking to my carpet so not only not only do I have luster stone in the back of my head but at least it's a pretty color in luster stone so I'll look like all the kids with the mermaid hair all the kids as they say and then I'm stuck to my floor so keeping the edge of my towel trowel clean I'm coming back in it's already starting to dry it's got that clay like appearance happening I am not scraping hard I'm gonna scrape carefully where I got the stucco wax in here I mean the luster stone in it so I can not get any more into it Like I said, I'm not pushing pressure, but I can still pick up a little product on the edge of my trowel while it's damp. So I'm gonna wipe and keep my trowel edge clean. So, okay. Whatever I had on my trowel for the first one seems to be gone, because I'm not getting any of those scrape marks. I didn't get it in the luster stone. I must have just had something glued that I could not find on the edge of my trowel which is good because I try really hard to keep my trowels in good shape. And I just keep wiping. Now, somebody asked me if this is a, a good with a two-man job. Actually, this point, this would not be the bad time to have somebody coming behind you. So that if you wanted a second person working with you, um, or if you were rolling the pattern. You put the pattern plaster on and then have somebody coming behind you and rolling or you're backfilling your pattern. You can have somebody coming behind you and burnishing. Again, I've done this <laughs> lots and lots and lots of times without any help. But if you're worried about your time and your speed, sure, bring a second person in. And you can see I'm getting a couple of bits like right up in here. Let's see if you can see it right up in here because I've got luster stone around this. That doesn't happen on a job. I'm slapping so many products on and around here. But I wanted you to see how this works. working this a little more than I would normally work because this was wetter and it was thicker. So I want to make sure I get my shine. And it's drying just a little slower. So if I'm still pulling stuff off of it, it's not quite there yet. This is such a happy sound. Scrape, scrape, scrape. You have used use luster stone on concrete statues with great results. Wow, I have never tried that. That's very interesting. Now I've forced this and it's pretty wet still, but I gotta tell you, I got a lot of shine on here. Yes, that's my nice big chunk of luster stone in here, but look how pretty and shiny that is. When this dries, the tiger texture and pattern will be more prominent, but you know, again, I put a lot of product on here and I put it on really fast. So I'm forcing it.
when you're doing us on a job, it'll be dry by the time you're ready to go or dry enough. You saw it. I was working wet plaster. Some of this wasn't even dry when I touched, when I was um, putting the second layer on, which is not exactly the way you want to do things. Okay, everybody. So I appreciate you all being with me. Uh, you've had a basic demonstration in Stucco Lux and in Luster Stone. Feel free to post questions on this thread. Feel free to message me either through Painted or through my personal page with questions about the products. I am 100% here to help all the time. That's what I do a lot of. Hopefully someday some of you who haven't will join me for a class down at the Decorative Finishes Studio in Louisville, Kentucky. And uh, we, I look forward to seeing you again. Uh, plan for hopefully Thursday and I will be doing some palette deco. And I don't know what else because I haven't decided yet, but I will decide by Thursday. Have a great day, everybody. Look, purple hands. Bye. Thanks.